Thank you for daily loading us with benefits father to you be all the praise to you be all the glory and to you be all adoration lord as your word come forth oh god let it represent your heart and let your name be glorified thank you god of heaven in jesus mighty name we have prayed god bless you please be seated Good afternoon and welcome to church. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Um, as you know, we've been freestyling, by which I mean we've not been in, a, in the middle of a series for the last maybe four weeks, and it's going to continue like that until perhaps the end of the month. Um, so every Sunday, it's almost a challenge wondering... Lord, which do you want us to talk about? And, or should we just go there and just have somebody just worship and let's go home? Anyway, today we are going to be looking at something called the journey. Hallelujah. If you are at least 15 years, you know that this life is a journey. Hallelujah. And um, because it's a journey, sometimes it can be really difficult. Because you find yourself in the middle of nowhere, it seems similarly in life. You are in between stops, you are in between appointments, you are in between sense, you are in between reason, you're just in between. And while the journey in itself is something to look forward to, and some, most parts of it are enjoyable, those in-betweeners can be a frustration, hallelujah. And so you need to learn how to travel in God to be able to arrive where you're going and still be in the frame and the state of mind to give glory to God and to enjoy whatever he's prepared for you in the, at, the, at the end of the journey if there is ever a, an end. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you open with me to 2 Kings chapter 4, I'll show you something. And I'm hoping that it would bless you. In 2 Kings chapter 4, really, um, is the entire um, chapter, if you have the time, read it. Um, and by the way, you ought to have the time. But I'm going to not read all of it. And I'm going to teach it in two layers. I'm going to teach 2 Kings chapter 4 as it pertains to Elisha. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then I will teach it as it pertains to the woman who prepared a place for him. No matter the perspective, or yes, no matter the perspective that you find yourself in today, I'm hoping that there'll be something you will take away. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So in verse number one, now one of the wives, no, that's too far away. Let, us, let me go to verse number eight. Yes. Now there came a day when Elisha went over to Shunem, where there was a prominent and influential woman, and she persuaded him to eat a meal. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he stopped there for a meal. She said to her husband, Behold, I sense that this is a holy man of God who frequently passes our way. Please, let us make a small, fully walled upper room on the housetop and put a bed there for him with a table and a chair and a lampstand. Then, whenever he comes to visit us, he can turn in there. I want you to say with me, he can turn in there. You see, a lot of us are so engrossed with getting to our destination that we never turn anywhere. So you get on the road, this is the journey of life. And all you want to see is that you have arrived at somewhere that is, there's a big neon sign that says stop. And this is your final destination. So it's like being inside a train and you, the final stop is your final destination. When this train stops at all the stops and maybe people are peddling soft drinks, people are peddling um, um, snacks, or it, the stop is considerable, maybe like 10, 15 minutes and you can dash out and grab something and dash back in. Those of us who are in a hurry to get where we need to go would not stop. Hallelujah. All of those opportunities to stop and take a deep breath and look around you and appreciate the scenery and people watch and see what people do on the platforms and on the train. When you get to your destination and someone else begins to paint the picture of the same trip to you, you'll feel like you did not, like you were not on the same trip with them. Hallelujah. And I think that the devil has it figured out. He knows that the, the juice is not in the destination. Because here's the thing. When you are in Christ, the destination is sure. So the devil knows one thing. He knows the juice is not in the destination. The juice is in the process or the journey itself. Because of that, he makes you, he winds you up and he rouses you and he says to you, just focus on where you need to stop. And by the time you get where you need to stop and you are alert from your t train or from your bus or whatever, what do you find? You find out that life just passed you by. You saw nothing, you did nothing, and you are at the end of your life. It's time to go back home. So Elisha was this prophet that was anointed. Elisha had everything. Remember that Elisha is the prophet that had on him the double portion of what Elijah had. And Elijah had already had a lot. So if there was someone who should not turn in there, it was Elisha. Everybody wanted Elisha's opinion. Everybody wanted Elisha to pray for them. Everybody wanted Elisha to, um, to cancel them. Everybody wanted a prophecy from Elisha. Everybody wanted Elisha to do something so that um, gorillas or beasts can come out or bears can come out and tear down their enemies. Everyone had something for Elisha to do. But there was this woman. Somehow, the first time Elisha went by, she invited him in and she said, come in, take a meal. And before he knew what was happening, it became customary for Elisha on that trip to stop by this woman's house or this woman's home for a meal. One day, I'm, I'm not sure how many trips, but he's, she, he must have made some number of trips. The lady now said, she said to her husband, she said, I perceive Tell your neighbor, I perceive. Let me say to you, social media time. I smell prophet for this man body. 
She said, I perceive that this is a prophet of God. Why don't we make room for him here? Let's prepare a place for him so that every time he's on this trip, he'll find somewhere to turn in. I know this journey. And I know that it is rare for people to ask people like me to turn in. But she said so he would turn in and rest when he comes. And before we knew it, Elijah, who used to stop for just a meal, now started to turn in, which meant that he would factor rest time or whatever time into his trip to spend time in this household. So I can quickly begin to talk to you about the fact that you need to stop and smell the roses, right? I can quickly begin to say to you that you need to stop right now and just rest and say, you see that place I'm going, it will be there tomorrow. So today I'm just, I'm not coming. Send them a WhatsApp. I'm not coming today again. I'm going home. I can also tell you, and I have told you that already, that you can't be running like cats. You only break. That there comes a time where you just break. You stop. Not because anything is wrong. Not because you know why you stop, but you just stop. So that perhaps God can talk to you again. But I want to talk to you before I get to all of those things about the things that were in the room that they prepared for this man. Let's go back to that scripture. It says, let's make a, full, a small fully walled upper room on the housetop. Number one, and put a bed there for him. What are beds meant for? For rest. If you will arrive your destination still primed for the work you must have imbibed the capacity to rest and when i say rest this is just the bed is symbolic i'm not saying sleep your life away i'm saying that there is a rest on the inside that you must have otherwise bows bars bars Everywhere you turn, something is crumbling. Everywhere you turn, someone is screaming, they want your attention. Everywhere you turn, some, nothing is enough. You went yesterday, you thought it was enough. Is, is that not the case? We do compassion drive here. Every single month since they started, Stashola have told her. Every single month since they started. Every single month. I'm shouting so that Stashola will hear me very well. Every single month, the money goes up. Every single month, the money goes up. Reminds me of Fela and his money on that pillowcase, on that bed, on that cooking pot. Because every time he took the money to go and buy his TV set, by the time he got there, want to for the money is gone up. He brings it back. He said, no, everybody now knows I took it from under mattress. So let me put it on that cooking pot. And then he begins to run again because the money to buy the what, what did he want to buy? TV must be complete. He got he saw it this time for 75k. So he had 68. So he quickly runs around and he puts whatever the balance, 7,000 yes. As I count money, that's not a problem. <laughs> and then he comes back. It is now 82,000. And that continues the journey of trying to acquire one TV set. No matter what happens, when you come back, it is more. You can so lose your capacity for rest because it is more. But this woman did not even ask, Elisha, who you they go? Where you they go? She did not ask, Does somebody die that you are going to raise him from the dead? She asked no questions. She just said, put a bed. She didn't even say, Elijah, if we put bed, you go sleep. She said, put a bed there. This man needs a bed. 
And as I read that scripture, it occurred to me that Elisha probably didn't know he needed a bed. Just the same way many of us don't know what we need. We think it's what they have calculated for us that we need. So that's the one we are running after with all that we've got. Hallelujah. They put a bed there. <coughs> because anyone that will arrive in God must learn to rest in God. If you read, um, which book was it? Wisdom of the Seed. If you read Wisdom of the Seed, you'll see, you see that it said that we walk from rest. It's not you rest after work. Everything you do, you do from a state and a, a state of rest because otherwise you get in trouble. Then they put something else in that room. What was the next thing? They put a table and a lampstand. A chair and a lampstand. And I was asking myself, what does a table stand for again? Where did they put a table here? I mean, think about it. Is he supposed to? Is he supposed to have a table there as well? Your bed stands for or is symbolic of a place to, you know, I know Pastor has just taught us about responsibilities. You know, sometimes eh, I'm enjoying playing LFA these days. That is, I just wake up and I decide today is, an, okay, okay, I just our children, I don't know what LFA means. Prof, suppose no, no. No future ambition. That's what they used to call us in university. They see you in it. It doesn't look like you are going anywhere because the fickles are going to library. They are going to class. You are just, you are just strolling past. Every time they ask you, are you going? Are you going to library? They say, God forbid, I know they enter library. They call. They will call you NFA. There comes a time that you take the weight of the word off your shoulders and you just be. You just be and just let God carry you. And if God throw away you for road, that's still fine because it's God. Breaks your bone, he can fix it. That's what the bed stands up for. Because sometimes you have to recognize that mm, I am responsible, but sometimes I just need to discipline myself and not move because I'm not God. I cannot save the world. But the table stands for something else. Let me go back to rest. <laughs> I heard that people who don't have forgiveness cannot rest. I heard it. I just repeated what I heard. But the table, what's the place of a table? A place of, the table is a place for study. Okay, so you, have, you can rest now. You've gotten that because NFA can be sweet. I'm not doing anything today. Nepa take light is okay. We will use fun. This will not the generator, fine, open window. Mosquito day, go bring anti moss. Whatever. We shall know they take on responsibility today. But after you have rested, there is a table. I'm talking about the journey of life. So we begin from a place of rest, yes. But there is a place for the table, the place where you study. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman. Eh? That does what? That's ashamed. Eh? That does not need to be ashamed because he's doing what? Right. Rightly dividing. The, there is a place for sitting down. And when you say, here, study now, I'm not saying go and buy another course. Sometimes all you need to do is sit down and let God tutor you. When was the last time you sat down for God to tutor you? When was the last time you just sat down? You had no commanding your money. You had no Bible study. You, nobody's thing, just you and God alone. And you are staring. Somebody would look at you from outside and say, she's staring into space. But your big notebook is in front of you and you're just looking. Study. Where you build studies for building up yourself on the inside. To strengthen yourself on the inside. Because why we are on a journey, this journey they kill. Study. Study. You need to know that your whole life is a final exam. Do you know that? Whether you are 15 or you are 50, your entire life is a final exam. 
And whatever stage, every point of your life, you are writing a final exam, a qualifying exam, you are writing it. Every day you wake up, you are writing a qualifying exam. And you have no study, you have no rema, you have no revelation, you have nada. All you know is what someone else has said. Oh boy, go hard you. Study. Study. You're on a journey. Study. Because some of us, when we even get to that destination, we'll be running and running and running. We have no idea what to do. We are now there. They say, hey, you've arrived. Say, oh, is this where I was going? Because you didn't study. You didn't know the name of it. You just entered the plane as they gave you the ticket. Study to show yourself up. Stop. Rest. Then take another stop and say to yourself, what do I need to know for my next If there's something that asks me in, in the body of Christ is ignorant, illiterate Christians. And I'm not talking of people who don't have degrees. I'm talking of all of us with our 15 degrees, but we know nothing. You need to know that you are studying for an exam. What that means, if you don't understand it, is that every single day you've had to make a decision. And every day you will make a decision to either decide for God or against God. Before I came here, I went somewhere with Prof and Audrey. And Audrey was telling me how she was in the middle of a transaction. She, Prof, you know that, would, that transaction would not hurt her if she goes that direction. This, the person only said, okay, I'm supposed to give you 15 naira. Just write it that I gave you 18 naira. You will still get your 15 naira. It's not reducing your 15 naira. This is it. It does not cut anything from what she's supposed to get. The other man just gets something more than he's qualified for. And a lot of us will not recognize that the devil just set an exam. And God did not cancel the exam. He's waiting for you to see whether you will pass. Because you think about it say, I'm not really hurting anyone. That's why I said to you that your entire life is a final exam. Every single day when you wake up, you have something hanging over your head. And that thing is called decision. You have to make one. Whether you make the right one or you make the wrong one. Whether you make it for God or you make it for... It's now you. So this woman put a bed. Because she knew that Elijah need, Elisha needed to rest. And she put a table because she knows that from where Elisha leaves her place to wherever else he will stop, Elisha may have to make decisions on the way. And Elisha better be prepared for what is ahead of him. The next thing he put, they put there in that room was a chair. A chair. A chair. A chair. A chair. A chair for stability. A chair for stability. A chair to understand that even if you were limping on one leg, in God you are stable. A chair to understand that even when it looks like the word is the bottom is falling off the word for you, you are stable. A chair. They put a chair there. You will just enter the room and you will sit down. But beyond that is that there is a stability. That Elisha would require to deliver on a double portion of Elijah's anointing. And I say you are on a journey. So I said in your journey you should begin from the place of rest. Do not be too much in a hurry to arrive where you are going number one. Stop periodically and do nothing and just smell the roses number two. Whatever nothing will look like for you. Okay. You know your nothing does not look like my nothing right. Then the second one, they put a table there. Make sure you study yourself. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing what? The word of truth. 
And I said that make sure you find your stability not in anything else but in God. No matter what it is that you opened the books and you saw in the middle of the books in the course of your study, do you know that sometimes you will lack clarity? Sometimes you will not understand what is in the stock, in, in, the, in the books that you have opened. Sometimes the exam, you, you know that you are almost failing the exam now. But if you are stable in God, his word says that my everlasting arms are beneath you. So it does not matter how far you have fallen. The guy will catch you. If you don't have that stability, kasala. Then they put something there. They put the chair. Let me go back to the chair. The chair also represents, because I read from the Amplified. If you read from the King James Version, it will say to you, they put a stool there. Hallelujah. The stool in those days was what women sat upon to bring forth children. Praise Jesus. And so they put in, inside that room where Elijah will turn into. They also put a stool there so that he can bet for the next generation. Because what you imbibe in the place of study, you will bring forth in the place of impact. Kai. So they put a stool there because he must bring forth. He can't be barren. All his life after a while, someone must say, this is Elisha's signature on, my, on, my, on me. This is Elisha's signature on my destiny. It was because of Elisha I was able to do this. It was Elisha that prayed for me. It was Elisha that taught the message that liberated me. It was Elisha that saw the vision that plucked me away from the jaws of whatever. Elisha must bring forth. Then we see the lampstand, as some will call it, or a candle, as other versions or translations will call it. What does the candle do? It lights the way, yes, for revelation. You see this journey? You see this journey? What did you say we were on? We are on a journey. You see this journey we are on? <laughs> How did you people used to sing that song? Uh, yesterday is gone. Yesterday's revelation ahead cannot carry you. It stands for revelation. Can you, yesterday, I don't know whether it was yesterday at CYM or the day before that I told us to pray. It was yesterday that we will be so, be so in tune with God that we see what he's doing in the season. There is nothing as frustrating. I don't know for you. For me, there's nothing as frustrating as not knowing what God is doing. I'm not saying that we know the A to Z, but at least let me have an idea. And it comes in the place of revelation. It comes in the place of a lit spirit. The Bible says your word is a light and a lamp. So when we're talking revelation, we're talking about God's word. We're talking about putting your ear to the heart of God. To hear what God is speaking in your season. Children of God, make I beg on let me tell you. You cannot be going like you don't know that your father owns this universe. And he wants rulership to happen. And if rulership is going to happen, you cannot be running God's earth on the terms of the word. The systems of the world, if they were going to work, we would we, we will not have the issues we have now. There will be no wars. There will be no um, viruses. There will be no terrorism. There will be no everything that we see today. But the systems of the world is not working. The only thing that will save us is Jesus and his revelation. And so when children of God just get in the car and are driving, they don't stop to refer, they don't stop to check their engine status. They did not check the car whether they, 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 it had water, the radiator had water before they left. They did not even bother to clean the windshield so that they could see far. When the children of God just get in the car because they are in a hurry to arrive somewhere so that they can announce to the world that they have arrived, they end up in the place that messes many things up. And for that destiny, are destroyed in the process. Why should you not know? And you are okay to get out of the room. Why are you just going on around like a zombie? You have no idea. Why are you catching God's vibes from the news? And half of it is fake news. How can God's vibes come off fake news? 
What exactly are we doing? The reason is because we never turn into anything. We never ask, just announce retreat. People don't have time to do those things anymore. I'm talking of corporate, where you see other people. Not to talk of it's only you go and sit. People don't turn into anything anymore. We don't turn away from the hustle and bustle anymore. We don't turn. We don't turn. We don't turn. And because we don't turn, you, the light, me, the salt, our food is tasteless, our rooms are dark. Think about it. Meanwhile, where the Lord is prepared, if you follow his pattern, there is what? There is a bed so that you will receive a bit of rejuvenation and re-energizing. There is a table so that he can open the books and show you things that no one else has known before. There is a chair so that in that study space, you can decree a thing and you can be sure God will meet my word out there. Out there. And of course, you can wake up and no matter what five million people are saying, you can stand and say, ah, 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 that's not God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, I know all of you think this is God, but guys, this is not God. We're walking around blindly. There is that place that you need to turn into today. I said I was going to teach this in two layers. So that's layer number one. The responsibility of every believer to be the light because of what they do in secluded places. Do you get that? You, what they do when no man is watching. Because I don't think that when she, uh, Elisha would turn into that room, the only other person perhaps who would see his activity would be Gehazi. Not the woman who gave him the space. Not her husband. Nobody knew what Elisha did when the doors were shut against him. But it was something that Elisha had to do every single trip since that place was, was prepared. The Lord has prepared a place. The Lord has prepared a place. But the question is, will you turn in? Or will you continue to rush? Make I first reach them. Make I first reach them. I, Maybe because of course I'm lazy though. From time I knew that first no mean anything. <laughs> it was it was my team. Uh, did you come first? Wait a day. First no mean anything. I used to always like both. I say now first now you did celebrate like this. Wait make we be sure we they go for life first. We we'll know who whether first mean anything. First no mean anything. First no mean anything. First no mean anything. And when you journey with God, at the God's pace is how you must go. And God's pace says, I have prepared a place, turn in. Stop and look. Did you remember in Exodus chapter 3 that um, what was his name? Moses was going and he saw a bush burning. The, um, the grass was not consumed or the bush was not consumed but there was fire in it. And Moses knew that something was different. And that's what happens when you turn. He saw what ordinary eyes had never seen before. He was the only person in the Bible I've checked who saw a bush burning but was not consumed. And it came because he turned. Layer number one. Layer number two. I want us to look at this woman. She used specific words. If I will go and talk about it and read it in the King James Version. Let's go to the King James um, translation of the Bible. In, 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 in verse number 8. Actually verse number 9. She said, I perceive. I perceive. That is, I, in the Amplified, it says, I sense. That is, I can tell, but I can't prove it. I think the Holy Spirit is telling me that what we need to do is lay it down something sacrificial. We need to give a part of our house. We need to put something down because I can perceive that if we did that, God was going to move. I have no idea where he's moving to. I have no idea what he's moving over. What I just perceive
believe is that there is something that he wants me to do. If I get it done, perhaps. But even if he doesn't do anything, I, I owe myself the responsibility to do as I have perceived. She perceived. Nobody preached to her. Nobody whispered anything to her. She perceived. She perceived. She perceived. She perceived. Then, you know, in Edo State, we'll say, but he phoned me. She just knew. And she said, I know this man by the spirit. That's what she was saying. She said, she was saying, you see this man that we've been giving food? I know him by the spirit. Because Elisha did not come with a, a business card. She said, I know this man by the spirit. I know him by the spirit. What she didn't know was that he held a key for her life. But she just knew him by the spirit. No wonder the Bible says some have entertained angels without knowing. When the Bible begins to talk about hospitality. But this is even so much about hospitality. As it is about your perception. Can you smell? What can you see? What can you see? Oh, those are blind bats. Sorry. That's the reality. And then they tell you, say, oh, you know what God do? And say, hey, God do something. What did he do? I don't know. Long time ago, it's over 15 years, I preached a message. I called it Dead Men Walking. And if I will be bold as I used to be bold, I can stand here and tell you that half of church is dead men walking. And not dead men walking in a good way. They are actually dead. They are just moving their bodies. So if we want to talk about us or this half of people, they are existing, they are not alive. They can't perceive anything. They can't perceive anything. But this woman perceived. It is instructive that there were two other people. There was someone else at least in her house. And that person was her husband. But she perceived. But thank God because not every day, not every one of us will perceive at the same time. Yes. You know her husband could have said, I, I don't know what you perceive, but I'm not doing that. So even when you are not perceiving and someone perceives, what do you rest? What is your response? But she decided that I perceived that her husband said, oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go with what you're saying. If you perceive, I agree, we perceive. <laughs> but you see, because she perceived, do you know what happened? She did something about her perception. She prepared a place. She repaired a place. And that's, we've looked at that, so I won't go over that again. But because she prepared a place, one day, if you read further down in that scripture, a few verses after where we stopped, they, um, what's his name? Elisha turns to, he, to her and says to her, what do you want me <laughs> to do for you? And she said, I perceive that you're a man of God, but I need nothing. I did not do because of how you will do me later. I did it because when you see, um, when you see, um, when you see glory in any form, you ought to steward it. She said, I don't need anything. After she had said it and she walked out, Gehazi whispered to Elisha and said, but she does not have a child. And he said, call her back. She came back and said, I know you said you don't want anything. But as the time of women is, in, this, in the next one year, you would have a son. And then she looked at him and she said, oh, don't do that. Too many have said this thing to me. And it has never come to pass. See the difference. I see the difference. So this woman had always perceived grace. She had always received grace. She had always done stuff. And she had always prepared. And everyone has spoken. So she had gotten to the point where, ah, uh, no, I'm just doing it because it is the grace that God is giving me. I'll continue to take all of, care of all of you, but I am pretty sure that half of you are fake. Because she has perception. She said, I need nothing. And he said, even when you don't need nothing, you shall have a son. The Bible said exactly as Elisha had spoken, she had a son. You see, 
sometimes you may not be able to see God. But there are some things that when God finishes doing, it emboldens you to believe God for what nobody even promised you. Because as we read further down, one day what happens? This boy has a headache. Before she could blink, the child dies. And this time, she did not call her husband to perceive anything. She saddled the donkey. Her husband said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to see the man of God. The husband said, is it well? She said, obviously it is well. And she went to meet him. And she got there and she said, guy, that child is dead. We need to go. Elijah said, let Gehazi go. I will give Gehazi my mantle. She said, I know they do that thing with you. I'm not doing it with you. You are so going. Why? Because there is a weak God will touch you eh? and your swag will just triple. She had gotten to this said, see, I've seen God out of nothing bring up a child. I like know this God that brought this child out can sustain this child. I may not know what to pray, but you man of God that could call forth a child, you definitely can raise a child. We are going. How does she transit from the woman who said, please, I don't need anything. No, do not fool me. To the woman that said, the child is dead. It is well, because you are going to make sure it is well. <laughs> Do you know why? So I've talked to you about uh, perceiving. I've talked to you about preparation. I've talked to you about receiving. And now I'm talking about maintaining. Do, 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 do you know why it looks like the body of Christ is a bunch of cowards? It's because we never perceive anything. Even when we perceive, we don't do the work to receive. We don't prepare for what we have perceived. We don't do the work to, work to receive. So there is nothing to try to maintain. Because what changed this woman's life was she encountered God in a dimension that she did not even know existed. And there, is, there are ways you encounter God that no matter what, you can never doubt God again. Someone asked me and said, did you travel to Newcastle to be with the children because they both tested positive for COVID? I said, exactly why should I go? She said, why you not go go? I said, what do I won't go do? I'm not God. I'm not doctor. How you swear am I in that equation? I'm not. I can't go. Instead, I told God, I said, me, I'm going to be in Lagos. Everything you told me to be doing, I'll be doing it. You are already in Newcastle. You don't need to fly nine hours. Deal with it. There was a day my son was telling me something and I got really angry. And I looked at him and I said, son, I'm not doing this thing with the devil. I will not do it. So devil, as you, just wherever you came through, just pack your things and begin to go. I am telling you now, this is not even something I want to pray about. I say I'm not doing this thing with you. Sometimes, when you have experienced God somehow, you will recognize that, uh-uh, kilo day. You see those two children, one was a child that would never have come. Between KK and Chidiabele, I had a miscarried three times. Before I had her, God told me that I was going to have her. There is no way God will come and take her, allow the devil to take her now. So there was nothing for me to do. That that I knew was why I could. My mother said, Ah, you the, your, your heart strong. I said, Mama, my heart no strong, but I know God. Joshua, I was pregnant for Joshua when the devil said he would kill me. And he couldn't kill me. The child is 18 years. Is it COVID that we now take the child? God didn't tell me. Someone like, you see her mouth. We God tell you. Have you not heard that some of us, God can't do something without telling them? Guys. You see this journey? As you want player, now you go play. <laughs> That's the thing. As you want play, Naim, you go.
clear them. If you want me that they tell you sorry every day, it's okay. We go to tell you sorry. God will give us grace. We go to tell you sorry. If you want to make nobody tell you sorry, even devil go fear to bring sorry matter come near you. This is somebody where's the place of the sovereignty of God? He's God. He can do you see all these things I've said? He can cross them and do his own. But that's a big but. Guys, here's what I'm trying to say. I don't know if I said it. Don't allow the everyday Torah cup of buying and selling. That's what I think the devil does. He just brings things that don't matter to try to distract you from the things that matter. It, and the moment you just look away from your focus, don't be distracted. If you find that you can't hold your attention anymore, because that happens, you carry flesh. Do you recognize that? The day you can't hold your attention anymore, drop it and rest. Get on the bed. Get on the bed. For three days in that time, I was on my bed. If I turned like this, I told God, I said, how are they doing now? How are they doing? What, what are you doing about this matter? How are you going to do it? Guys. <laughs> there is a place of your posture like an Elisha. One who recognizes that they, they're put on the earth to bring value that only you can bring. And there is a place you posture as the woman who didn't have a child. Even though she was influential, there was a but in her life. Here is the thing. Every one of us who's been called to give so much. Every one of us also has something that is lacking. If you don't have the balance of I can turn into a place. There is a chair. There is a table. There is a, there, there is a bed. There is a table. There is a chair and there is a lamp. You will never be able to make the impact that God has called you to. And if you are one of us who is so excited about making impact. That you do not recognize the place of perception and preparation and receiving. You will also not be able. The light, Antonia said to me today, um, she said, sister, um, she was asking me something. I said, just leave that matter. I, I, I don't vex. I just, she said, sister, you go make you do like that because this life, you know, balance at all. I said, now you they talk. You know, balance. But I said, no balance. So we know someone who balances us, no matter how precarious it is. There are things that God has spoken to your heart. They symbolize your journey. You've been driving this thing for so long. It is time to stop. And when I say you've been driving it for so long, you've been praying too hard about it. It's time to stop. Get on the bed and rest. I actually think that God likes when you decide that Oh God, okay. So now there's one door. Okay, they go sleep. When I wake up, before I wake up, make you just I, they, I because me, I, I need to sleep. Right now I have no power. But sleep, I can sleep. So make I go sleep, come I they come. I think God likes that because you step away from the arena where you are inadequate, but you are trying really hard to be adequate, and you give him room to just prove that he is God. There's no one here who is not on something going somewhere. But do you know how to turn in? And there's no one here whose life is perfect from start to finish. Do you know? Do you have a sense of perception? What can you smell in the earth? What do you know that God is doing? How do you position yourself so that you are one of the first ones who step into what God is doing? What exactly do you know? Brethren, let's rise on our feet. You 
you talk to God, whether the thing is that you are on the on in, on, on the train and you are in such a hurry for the train to arrive, or it is that you have now gotten there and you did not see anything and you can't even remember why you got on the train in the first place or maybe it is that you can't perceive anything so because of that there's nothing to prepare and as long as you don't prepare there's no receptacle to receive and because you can't receive there's nothing to maintain you know exactly where you are you talk to god about it talk to him about it i need you to tell the lord where you start and where you stop you need to know where your strength begins and where it ends the bible says that his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses the bible says that god can do exceedingly abundantly above the bible says that it is his good pleasure to show you the hidden things of the dark places but will you turn in if you've been running on fumes say lord i'm turning in today literally tell God I'm turning in today Lord just make me sleep I'm turning it today there was a time that God said to me I think it was leading to Ruach as I wanted my canty canty God said bid me go to sleep I was like God he said go to sleep and I mean I slept for hours on end I couldn't get up I wake up and I'll fall right asleep like somebody was drugging my meal. I just kept sleeping and I kept sleeping. After a while, I asked him, I said, God, she not be said, I sick, you know, tell me. He said, I said, sleep, you know, sick, just sleep. If you've been running too hard, tell God to put you to sleep. Because that rest is how you receive re energizing for your, for your nest. And if you can't perceive anything, ask the Lord to reactivate your senses. You must see what ordinary eyes cannot see. You must hear what ordinary ears cannot hear. We are in a season that it is only those who can do those things. Open my eyes, oh God, and open my ears. Grant me the humility to be able to turn in and just wait let me be able to take suggestions that make me seem like i am weak so that you can strengthen me and set me on the path that you want me to go no matter what you do oh god i want to be in your will from the beginning to the end almighty help me almighty help me and if you're online and you've not given your life to jesus or you're even in this room and you're not sure you have given your life to Jesus because some of us are not sure today's the day that you come and say Lord Jesus I give you my life Lord Jesus I give you my life Lord Jesus I give you my life because that's the step the first step to being able to perceive anything it is the first step to being able to turn in because if there's no Jesus who are you turning into speak to God by yourself Father Lord, I thank you. I honor you for your word, oh God. I give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, because you don't expect us to run on fumes. Thank you because we can stop for a breather. Thank you, Lord, oh God, because you have prepared a place. Thank you, Lord, because there is a bed there. Thank you, Lord, because there is a table. Thank you, Lord, because there is a chair. Thank you, Lord, because there is a lamp. There is nothing that I need. Your word says that all things that pertain to life and godliness, you have given them to me. Lord, I'm grateful for that opportunity. Lord, now I ask, oh God, that you touch my senses. May I be able to perceive what you want to do in this season. Now that you have brought me in for revitalization. Father, in the name of Jesus, may I be able to perceive what you are doing. And Lord, what you say to me, oh God, may I be able to boldly declare it. And Lord, as I declare it, oh God, let your zeal begin to perform it. And Lord, whatever you give to me in this season, may I not lose it. May I be able to maintain it. May I be able to sustain and maintain it. Only by your grace, O oh God. And let all the glory, let all the honor, and let all the adoration come to you. Thank you, God of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen.